How do you hide an entire city? Well, starting in the 1940s, the Soviet Union hid not just one city, but hundreds of them. These were cities so secret that they were kept off of every official map and had no proper town names. But there was one in particular, 25 miles northeast of Moscow, that was truly special. Closed military townlet number one didn't look like much. It was some drab concrete apartment buildings, some nondescript offices hidden way out in the middle of the woods. But it was hidden from the world for a reason. In the 1960s, it was home to one of the Soviet Union's most closely guarded scientific programs. This drab little town was also known as Star City, and it was where the cosmonauts lived. hundred cities and a million people literally living off the map. If you lived in one of these cities, your town had no name and you as a citizen were yourself kept out of view. In 1960, the Soviet Union ordered the creation of a brand new closed city. It was the Cosmonaut Training Center. The small team of cosmonauts moved to Star City and they only took up one building. It was a tiny operation. But slowly, it began to grow. Over the 1960s, they built the best space program in the world, at least for a while. During the 1960s, the Soviet Union invested heavily in its cosmonaut program and planned extensively for a lunar landing. Star City itself blossomed into a real town, with its own post office, movie theater, a railway station, and a couple of schools. And all of this investment paid off. The Soviet Union not just sent the first satellite into space, but the first dog, the first man, the first woman, and did the first spacewalk. All of this was bearing fruit. It was bearing space fruit. By the 1990s, the great communist dream had fallen apart. And in 1991, when the Soviet Union collapsed, Mir was in the sky with an astronaut inside of it. But Kazakhstan, where he needed to land, was no longer part of the Soviet Union. So he was left up there for months while someone figured out what to do with him and where he could land. In 2008, control was finally and officially handed over from the military fully to Roscosmos, the Russian version of NASA. And this marked the first sort of true opening of Star City to the public. You could actually go and visit Star City for the first time, and you can today. They offer tours. So while the secrecy of Star City has faded, its aesthetic remains firmly fixed in the 1960s and 1970s. It's got kind of a retro-futuristic, shabby, chic thing going on. But don't be fooled by the aesthetic. Star City still contains some of the best training equipment in the world. In fact, with the space shuttle retired, the Soyuz rocket, designed in the 1960s and built to last, is the only way to get to space. Subscribe here and watch more videos here. That astronaut who was left up in Mir, who was launched when it was the Soviet Union and landed when it was Russia, he runs the whole place now.